To start out this movie, let's go to File, Open, go to the Desktop, or wherever your exercise files are stored. Open up Exercise Files, Chapter 3, and let's open up Robot. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Herbie, (laughs) the poorly modeled robot of the future. And Herbie, somewhat shaped like a torpedo, is flying through space to render assistance to people in need or whatever. (laughs) And Herbie is going to help us talk about coordinate systems. Coordinate systems are a little bit dry, so I'm going to try to make this as fun as possible. That's why Herbie's here to help us out. And I'm also going to give you just what you need. But you see a lot of X, Y, and Z all over the place in 3ds Max. Now, if you're familiar with graphing 101, you know that X represents the left to right axis. Y represents the up-down axis. And Z is the three-dimensional axis. So knowing that then, you might look at these views and say, hey, you know what? Z is not up and down. And Y over here in the left view is not side to side. Well, here's what's going on. And to do this, I'm going to zoom into our grid here and tilt it ever so slightly. And that'll work. Now, this grid is like the floor of our scene. And this grid does follow the standard Cartesian coordinate system. So X here is left to right, Y is up and down, and Z is towards us and away from us. And if we rotate that a little bit more, we'll see that that's what's going on with these coordinates as well. So the reason why these coordinates in the other viewports are off a little bit or seem to be off is because they are giving you the reference to the master grid here. So if you're really looking at the front of your scene, the grid would be on the floor. Hence, X would be side to side and Y would be forward and backwards and Z would be up and down. And that's why when we create 2D shapes, as we will later, they won't really show up too well in the front viewport unless you rotate them or change the angle because there's no Z depth, so they don't go up any. And this XYZ is not only important to know as you work throughout Max, it's also really important to know as we talk about coordinate systems. You see, each object has its own coordinate system. So our scene might have its own XYZ, But each object needs to also have its own X, Y, Z as we adjust and fiddle with it. I'm going to get back this view to the way it was. So Herbie's kind of flying through space here. Yeah, that'll work. And by default, over here, we have the view coordinate system. As we click this drop down, we'll see that there are several coordinate systems to choose from. I'm going to go through the ones that I use the most often. And that's not to say that those are the best to use or whatever. But I want to give you a solid foundation of what I'm doing here with coordinate systems. And then you can go and research the help and find out a little bit more details of these other coordinate systems if you'd like. Again, the default is view, which basically means if I select my object and I'm going to hit this move tool button to select the move tool, you'll notice that in the orthographic viewports, the gizmo is according to my frame of reference, my left to right, my up and down my forward and backward, while the perspective view is according to the grid's coordinate system. So this X corresponds to the grid's X. So as I click the Y, so as I click the Z or the Y, oh, look out, here comes Herbie. (laughs) Now, very close to view mode is screen mode. And screen mode makes it so that every view is according to my frame of reference. Even the perspective view is according to my left or my right, my Z or my Y. I'm going to select him again. Now, probably the most important one to be aware of is local coordinate mode. This means that the gizmo behaves according to Herbie's coordinate system. Right now, that may not seem that important to you. But let's say we're launching Herbie the Torpedo Robot into space. If we're in view mode, try moving him up as if he was traveling like he was shot out of a cannon. That's rough. Or go to screen mode. It's very, very hard to do. We want to launch Herbie as if he was launched out of a cannon or flying on his own personal trajectory. So far, we've looked at view and screen, and those are not the solutions here. As we take it into local coordinate mode, 
then the X, Y, and Z axis changed to reflect Herbie's X, Y, and Z. Now I can move Herbie in his own local coordinate Z axis. And now look at that. He launches according to his own coordinate system. This is also great for twirling objects where you want to rotate them on their own local coordinate space. Notice that the coordinate system reset itself as I changed transforms. That's good to keep in mind. If we went back to the move tool, it would still move Herbie in his own local coordinate space. So if we wanted to be back to the default view, we would have to manually change that. So again, if I wanted to rotate Herbie on his own axis, view mode would not be the way to go. And if I change it to local coordinate mode, I can spin him as he would see fit, making it really easy to launch Herbie twirling and spinning and dashing into space, no problem.